So, would you like to introduce yourself? Bonjour, the way I'm going to talk about my country's name, which is the British Kim Rodem. I'm going to talk about the British Kim Rodem. My name is Mitch Case. I'm Director of Student Services, Outreach and Resources at Chingwa Kinema Gagamik. And uh, I'm a first degree Medeon of the Three Fires Medeon. Yeah. Yeah. Writing with cough drops. Tell me more about your program. So, what is it called and what do you do? Here at Tringok, we have we offer two provincially accredited degree programs. So we have our Anishinaabe Studies uh, program, which is just brand new. It's actually like we have, the press release isn't even out yet, but it's been approved. And then our Anishinaabe One program, the language program. So that the language program has been going for about almost uh, about twenty years now. The goal of the language program is obviously to build up strength and proficiency of uh, Ojibwe language speakers, and then to sort of empower second language learners to you know, begin that journey toward that language acquisition. And then uh, the Shabby Studies program is a one-of-a-kind in, in Canada. Yeah, it's a one-of-a-kind BA program in in Canada that focuses on worldview and knowledge systems of Anishinaabe people, particularly the Great Lakes region Anishinaabe people. What would the age group be for these programs? So the age group, the sort of target group is sort of, there's two different, there's, you know, your standard 101s and 103s or whatever the ministry calls them. So 101s are right at a high school. And so that's, uh, I'd say, I I don't have solid numbers on this. This is sort of um, in the development stages of, of our tracking systems. But about 50-50, I'd say. 101s right at a high school students and then mature students who come back to school. So, yeah. yeah. What would the target audience be for these programs? Aimed mostly at Anishinaabe people, right? That, that's the that's the goal, right? Of a culture based education institute, is to re empower Anishinaabe people and to to revitalize those systems in a in a really good, solid, strong, healthy way. That being said, though, we certainly we've had our like our fair share of non Indigenous students, and and we've had we've had a lot of international students, lot yeah, lots of international students, and so you know, and, and I mean, everybody gets something a little different from the program. For Anishinaabe people, it's really empowering to be able to relearn those things that have been lost. And then for non-Anishinaabe people, there's a, it's an opportunity to actually come to understand our history and come to understand how we can maybe build a better relationship between Anishinaabe people and you know settler people, rooted in our our understandings of things rather than you know always having to defer to somebody else's understanding of us. So, how would you measure the success of the programs? I think it's, there's a few different ways of, of measuring that. I think there's, you know, like the the number of students who are interested in taking the courses and, the, you know, in the past two or three years, like we've maxed out all of the Anishinaabe Studies courses. The last the last two years that Bob Redden was here, yeah. we were, we were we had to split the courses. There was too many students and we, like, both of them filled up and they were at capacity because there was just so much interest, both in, like, his way of teaching, but also in what we were talking about, right? And so... Um, I think that's one key indicator of, you know, when students from other programs and, you know, sociology students or business students or whatever else are, like, pushing each other out of the way almost to get in the room, right? There's there's something that's working. And then the, the outcomes, I think, is, is really, uh, it's really encouraging to see what a lot of our students have gone on to do. It's sort of twofold. There's students who have left here and gone to do really cool things that, you know, stand in, in standing up for environmental justice and social justice issues and those sorts of things. But there's also students who were already doing really cool things and came here as a way of like supplementing that. And so like one of those people I think about is like Grandma Josephine, right? She was doing all kinds of cool things and then came here to be a part of this. So I think the variety of different people that it attracts to the program I think is really a, a key indicator, right? Of people who are young and idealistic and want to change the world and people who are not quite as young, but are out there changing the world, right? Yeah. I think that's really cool, right? And yeah. then they, they work together and learn together. So what is Indigenous education to you? Oh, my. There's there's a few different things, right? Like there's what we try to do and what our mission here at Chingwalk is and what we were, like the path that, that we were led down by Bob and when he was our lead instructor here was, was a really strong commitment to culture-based education. Like we won't be satisfied with just reciting interesting facts about ourselves. It's it's like we have to really and truly come to understand our ways of knowing the world, our ways of seeing, our ways of relating, 
our ways of connecting. We have to really come to understand what those things mean. Like for us, the way that we accomplish that, like, is through the language program and understanding, like, the origins of Anishinaabem one and the philosophy of the behind the language. And so there's a whole lot of learning there. And then there's like in the Anishinaabe studies program, there is like a, learning about our history, but but really learning about so much more than just you know, in 1763, the king said this or whatever. We just barely touch on that, right? And it says that that's really not about us. Like, that's about how somebody else decided to deal with us. So that's that's okay. Then we, we, we need to understand that too, but you can you can get that anywhere, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what we're trying to do is uh, really revitalize like, our understandings of the world, particularly like we, you know, we, we put a lot of emphasis every year on... Um, we've brought an Onabna, say, up here several years now and... and like start with the creation story and begin there, right? And begin at that place of, like the beginning of everything. That's what that's that's the natural starting point for us. So is the term indigenous one that you would normally use? Yes and no. So we here at Chingwak we we almost exclusively use the term Anishinaabe, and we but we qualify that we define that as meaning First Nation, Métis, and Inuit, right? And so we, we, we use the term that belongs to this part of the earth, right, where we exist in. But we also try to take a practical view of, as long as they're not, people aren't being offensive, they can yeah. use whatever term they want. <laughs> <laughs> but we really emphasize, though, that sort of understanding, not just what we're studying, but where we're studying. And so we try to try to reflect the language mm-hmm. of where, where, we, where we are, yeah. How would you define education from an indigenous perspective? It, I mean, that's a... We're going to be here all year. <laughs> that's a long, that's a loaded question. Yeah. I think it really depends on the student, right? And this is why what Bob Newton always talked about when, when he was, you know, preparing us all to, to do this work is that there really is no roadmap. You, you can't have a roadmap for education because you, you, by doing that, you immediately begin to exclude people. Right? You begin to lose people along the way, people who aren't prepared for the next the next thing. You know, oh, we have to do this this week because it's what the syllabus said. Um, we put a really heavy emphasis on self-knowledge and students coming to understand their own worldview, their own understandings of things, and really challenging their own views and beliefs and, and, and really taking a really strong introspective look at your at yourself and your own understanding. And then I think through that, that's where you you can really you can really get anywhere with it then because, you know, a, a student who a student who comes here and wants I, I want to understand the Indian Act I want to know that right, then you can pursue that right that that's open to you you can pursue that but if you want to understand, I don't give a damn about the Indian Act I want to know about, like where do our rights come from, regardless of the Indian Act regardless of Section thirty five regardless of Royal Proclamation or whatever else. Where do they come from? They come from the spirit. They come from, from that first moment that Wayne Bojo or you know Mishko Gawa put his his tracks upon the earth, right? So, if that's the way you want to go, you can go there, right? Yeah. And in either way, then you're 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 putting yourself into that. Whether you're studying about Mishko Gawa and, and that work, then you relate to that in your own way. If you're studying mm-hmm. about Indian Act, then you'll relate to that in your own way, right? So it's really. Uh, like the, the student is really in the driver's seat in a lot of ways. What is your vision for the future of Indigenous education in your community and throughout Canada? Some of the things that we've been talking about uh, here, so we've, we've created the foundation now, right? Shingwalk is the sort of the foundation and the beginning and, and will be the home of wherever we take this vision now, right? We're talking now about like how do we, uh, how do we, how do we expand that now? to meet some of the more sort of existential problems that our communities face, right? And so the two of the things that we've talked about is, you know, um, one of the big issues we've seen is that we don't have, there's a huge um, gap in our knowledge and our understanding around how do we come into the world and how do we leave, right? And so um, we're in the very, very, very beginning stages of this, but thinking about the creation of a culture-based Anishinaabe midwifery program and a funeral director program, right? Oh, wow. Because we don't we don't have those opportunities to to actually learn those things. You know, and there, then there's there's so much protocol around, you know, that we need to think about about how do we how do we actually do that in a way that's careful and cautious and respectful of protocols and 
in the in, in the community in the in the lodge and whatever else, right? But those are two of the things that we're talking with. Like we don't want to we don't want to just replicate something that like our partners at Alcoma are doing, like a, a business program that's Nishnabe focused. We don't we don't want to do that. And and things like social work, right? Like there's there are indigenous focused social work programs all over the place. So what are the things that what isn't happening everywhere? And so like those sorts of things like. Um, yeah, the, like the midwifery program or funeral director program or whatever else, so that you can you can be certified and do that work, you know, in yeah. in the province or whatever, and meet those things, but also be prepared to do it culturally, right? Yeah. So those are some of the really interesting things, and then like my hope for across Canada is I hope that like I want to see like a hundred Chingwaks, you know what I mean? Like, and I, each each and every community and nation is just standing up and doing this work in yeah. their own way. Because we don't want to just ex export what we're doing too, right? Like, no, this works here. It doesn't yeah. mean it'll work somewhere else, right? Yeah. Can you think of any types of information that if you had now, it would help to achieve your vision for your community in Canada? Hmm. There's a lot of room for information about people who are looking for real, meaningful partnerships, right? In this sort of... Um, reconciliation era or whatever it is, right? There's a lot of superficial partnerships, I think, right? There's there's people who want to partner just for the sake of it. Does it look good on their website or whatever? Creating a network and a web of, of people who are actually interested in a common goal, I think would be really, that'd be really helpful. Like centralized sources of support and resources for expanding and developing programs, right? So, yeah, sort of having a network or a, a community of people who who have been down this path before and, and sort of know how to get there. There just is real practical sort of stuff, right? At least here, we, we've got the culture part down pat. We don't, we don't need those resources. We just need the 